Oh, so you're from the... you're from Singapore, not from China. Yes, from Singapore. Okay, interesting. China is Singapore. Well, you're going to do the recording. I think it's a sovereign country. No, the British bring them both into yeah. Singapore. So honestly, what is? I know you are spiritual at, in some aspect. I really, you know, for people, do you believe in reincarnation? I'm reincarnated a billion times. Yeah, but so you believe in that, yeah? I know that. So how do you know that you have been reincarnated? Because everything comes from an invisible force. You know, when the Bible says in the beginning, God. I don't believe in the Bible. That's Him. <laughs> it's just clear. In the beginning was the Word. Yeah. What is all. You know, in the Chinese Bible. No, no, I mean, I mean about the reincarnation because it, it's, it's a cycle, isn't it? It's a cycle. Do you believe that there is a, this cycle breaks at some times where it stops? Like, you know, the, the Buddhists believe in, um, um, like, like, there is different cycles, but then you have um, Mokta. Mokta is, where, Moksha, yeah, sorry. So, Moksha is where you have enlightenment and you're free from this cycle of rebirth. Do you believe in that? Uh, well, the Buddhists believe that to be a human being, you must have earned a lot of merit. Earned okay. a lot of good things in your past life in order to be a human being. But I don't know. What if you were something other than human in your past life? Highly possible. Because so, all the other beings, the tree, the plant, the bird, the bat, the virus, mm. they have their life. They have the same source. They're right. just a source from the same tree, different branches, different, different, different. So let's say you were a mouse in your past life. What is the best yeah. thing a mouse needs to do to become a human again? Well, whether a mouse or a bird or any animal. Yeah, they all want let's, to live let's, long. let's say mouse. They all want to live long. Okay. Want to live healthy, want to live a life without pain. Want to live to be a father, a great, great, great grandfather and be happy. So, so basically just survival and procreation. Yeah, like 99% yeah? of all the other species does. But what about humans? We are one of the species. I, I know, but too special. you know, as far as humans are concerned, it's not just, um, it, it, it's basically not just survival and procreation. We build civilizations, unlike the other animals. We can communicate, we have consciousness. So we are not really animals, we are different, we are humans. Right, okay. So how many different types of humans are there? Male and female? <laughs> that's the closest there's to. There's the Neanderthal, there's the Java man, there's the Peking man, there's the Lucy, there's the... Yeah, but they're not homo man. sapiens. They might be hominoids or some other pre-human pre or I think our brother uh, Saburi, he might be able to give you a better answer than me. But as far as I'm concerned, homo sapiens are different to all this, what do you say, incarnations. If, all if you, yeah. But my question was with regards to your reincarnation theory. I want to know what is the best thing an animal like a mouse needs to do in order for it to achieve a level or get enough credit to become a human. To be honest with you, I do not know. Because I, what I do know is that, you know, what I do know yeah. is that everything comes from this invisible force. The Chinese call it the Tao. The? The Tao. Tao. C-A-O. Tao, okay. Tao. Yeah. Okay? Like I was trying to quote you the Bible, John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word became God. But in the Chinese Bible, it said in the beginning was the Tao. The Tao was with God, the Tao became God. Right. How, do you, how do you define Tao? Tao? The literal meaning of the word Tao means the way, the power. Okay, the good. Yeah. But for the man who wrote that book, he said, Tao is an innocuous thing that was in existence before time, before place, before material, before the earth came in. It was there all the time. It was in existence. It doesn't need a creator. It was so existence. is that like your like way of, Is that like your way of saying God? Well, you call, you call it the source. The source, yeah. Yeah, because God can be so many different connotations. Because we believe God is the source of everything as well. Okay? Yeah, that's Every, just a belief. Yeah, source in a way, like everything is created. He's a creator. So everything that is in existence is because he created it. But let me let me carry on. Okay. Yeah. So the Tao created one, one created two, two created three, and then three created everything. And the Tao follow nature. And Sorry, what is the one, two, three? I didn't quite follow that. I know I understood the Tao, which is the source. Yeah. The flower lines start with one circle. The one circle join become two circle, two circle become three circle, three circle keep running, become the whole flower of life. 
There's a source from come from a little little circle of life. Okay. Yeah. So I I still didn't get the uh, the understanding of the reincarnation. How does it work in terms? Say for example, you know, do you remember about your past life? No, I don't you don't. don't. So don't, in other words, no, no, that's fine. In other words, you're starting from zero every time you're born. So there's no point of reincarnation if you're going to start with a fresh well, you, slate, you know, with a blank slate. Because then there's no point of you reincarnating if you don't remember at all what happened in the past life. So there's no way to re-rectify what you have done wrong in your past life. If there was a way for you to remember what you've done in your past life, then yes, this would be like a new start, a new beginning, because now you want to improve yourself. But since you don't remember at all what happened in the past life, then there's no point of reincarnation. The, the Buddhist tell some story you know, yeah. about a man, you know, he got murdered by somebody and then got robbed and stolen. So then the Buddha explained, this man in the past life was a banker, you know, he lied a lot of people. That's why he got... The karma, yeah? Yeah, the karma. Yeah. Action. But that's that's different. The action. karma is different. I'm uh, talking about you as reincarnated being. Everything has an action. Everything as a consequence. consequence yes you know and that's the reason i asked you yeah. if you believe in life after death and if you and if you will be accountable imagine this there's a life after death and there is god and there is accountability for your actions in this world yes the question is what if your reincarnation theory or your reincarnation uh, aspect of belief is not going to happen but what we as, as believers in the Abrahamic faith, we believe in that God is going to hold everyone accountable for their actions in this world. Yes. What if this is true? Because you see, you have been given... I'm not worried about it if it's true or even if it's not true. No, but, but if you're going to be held accountable for your actions, then I think we all need to worry about that. What I need to worry about is my present life, that I do not do any harm. I do not cheat, I do not lie, I do not kill. But you just told me earlier you're a liar. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I asked you specifically with lie, not a belief. You see, are you telling me that you you never... Are you telling me you never lied in your life? Are you telling me you never done anything wrong or any sin in your life? Yeah, we can. We, we, we try, but that doesn't mean we are sinless. Nobody is going to take an account, take a, take a little, little computer, credit, debit, credit, debit, to find out what, what you have done. Nobody. It might be insignificant and small to you, but... If you have done wrong, the karma will come to you. No, no, what I'm saying is that it might not be, ins it might be insignificant to you, but maybe not to the person you're doing it to. So, your, your notion or your understanding of good and bad is subjective. You yeah, see what I mean? Now, what I remember earlier, I asked you about objective truth. Yes. What if there is an objective morality? Yes. And God decides. I believe in God, so that's why I'm saying this. God decides what is bad and what is good, and He has told you about this in His scriptures. My belief of God is the Tao. Yeah, the Tao. Does the Tao, Tao communicate with you? No. So, the how do you know what is good and bad? The Tao communicates in a silent way. In a silent way. Like he like you get signs. No no silence. Yeah, I know I know, but nature. how does he nature? Yeah. You look at nature. So you have signs in nature. You follow nature. Nature follows the Tao, the Tao follow nature. What do you mean nature follows the Tao? I don't understand. How does the nature your, follow your Tao? Action is not in line with nature. But but who defines which action is right and which is wrong? For for example, okay. if a tree let's say it's a it's a it's a lion. Either, either sheep or whatever. Yeah. Okay, the lion is, is, is that a good thing or a bad thing for the, the lion? lion? It's the nature of the lion. Yeah. But if the human eat the sheep, is that the nature of the human to eat the sheep? Well, you have got teeth to eat sheep. <laughs> yeah. You have got canines for a reason. To tear. How come your canine teeth is smaller than the cat teeth? Cat. Sorry? How come your the canine teeth is smaller than the, the cat canine? Because you can cook unlike the cat. You can cook your food unlike the cat. Are you saying you eat raw meat? You how don't come, need raw meat. How, how, come, how come we are the only one that need to cook our food? Because we are, the other animals do not cook their food. Because the other animals have got other means. For example, you like you just pointed out your canine teeth is not as like the cat or the, like the lion. So they are able to tear their meat and consume it. Yes, for them that is normal. For us human beings, we have a different way. We are so we are not just carnivores, we are omnivores. So are we, are if you decide kill, to eat plants, are we, you can, killing ourselves indirectly? are we killing? Yeah, if you if you poison yourself, 
deliberately, then you're killing yourself. For example, people smoke, drink alcohol, that's kind of killing yourself. Okay, we eat cooked food. Yeah. Yeah. It's, can the cooked food be alive again? Can something that's dead come to life? Is that your question? Can the cooked food be alive? No, I don't think so, unless God wants it to. So if you're eating food, if you're eating dead food, Dead food. Dead food. Yeah. Dead, what of? This dead food you get dead. Everybody needs to kill before they can eat. Even the lion and cats. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but the lion and cat they eat live food. They yeah, but they food. still have to kill it before eating it. They kill the food, but they don't cook the food. I know they don't cook the food. You know, Why would you expect life, them to they, cook? They still a live cell inside there. Why are you comparing a human to an animal? I don't understand. The, you know the cats and the cat and lion. Listen, the cat and lion. They also do not go shopping like you for your vegan food or whatever you want. Yes? You go to the supermarket or you grow it, but they don't. Are you, are you nature? Are you part of nature? Well, I'm part of nature, yeah. You're part of nature? Yeah. So... I'm part of this universe. Are you living in a natural way? Although we are, we are in a civilization, yeah. we are not living the way that we support you. We are not even born naturally. What do you mean you're not born naturally? How are you born? Test tube? You are born to circumcision. You are born in a. Whoa, 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 whoa! What has circumcision got to do with your being born? Oh, sorry, not circumcision. <laughs> I think he's obsessed with circumcision. This guy. Maybe you should go see a doctor. You are born with cesarean. Not everyone is born through cesarean. No, 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 no. Born what do you call to what you call artificial induction? Have you seen people who live in countries where there is no? They exactly. So, so don't say everyone is born through cesarean. Or through uh, <laughs> through water birth or yeah. something like that. So what I'm saying that not all of us are born naturally. No, but what's your point? What's the point you're trying to make? Well, because all animals born naturally, and unless you, when you come from an egg. And you know, okay, what's the point? Because through the birth process, yeah, there's called limbic imprinting, whereby the animal pass on their knowledge to the other animal. Yeah, through this li process of limbic imprinting. Yeah, but it's called it's. The, they pass on the knowledge? knowledge. What do you mean? They pass on the knowledge. Well, so you're saying either. you're saying a lion cub doesn't need to, or a bird doesn't need to learn from his mother to fly? They have the knowledge to fly since they are in the egg. Yes, they have the knowledge. You're, 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 you, you, you think the, you you think the the lion's cub doesn't need to learn how to hunt? Maybe you should watch some um, what do you say? Maybe Natural animal. history. <laughs> Maybe animal. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I watch a lot Na of National Geographic watch or something like that. Yeah, you you I, I don't you see the watch those that you watch no no. TV I'm saying look, the knowledge is not passed on. Yes, they have instincts which are passed on through the genes. Yeah. Nothing to do with the way they were born or birth or something. Yeah. So it, even if you're born in it got a lot to do with the one because we are born because the, the pre present situation the genes will still be passed on. Situation is that we are run by broken men. That's why you got a yeah. broken society. Anyway, I want to go back to the question I asked you earlier with regards to life after death. What if there is really life after death? Don't you think you should prepare for that? No, I don't for example, your understanding... I have enough, enough people who are trying to prepare me for this life after death. No, no. It's, I, I've what, given up what, I'm, what I'm saying is that you have given up that belief. I've given up that belief. I don't do that belief. So if I die, I die. You can feed me to the fish. You can feed me to the voucher. That's fine. But that's your flesh. Remember you spoke about your spirit? Yeah, what about that? that, that only the body. What about your spirit? The body, the body is the spirit will be you know, the spirit will you know when you when you die, you'll be given you'll given a new body. When so die, so your your old body will disintegrate in this world, your flesh and so on. But when you die, when you'll be resurrected, you'll be given a new body. The new body so don't think you won't feel pain or. The new body could be a cat, could be a mouse, could be a fish, could be anything. No, but that's what I'm saying. What's the point of this reincarnation belief of yours if you don't even remember what happened in your past life? No, because I was born with a clean slate. Well, yeah, yeah, that's... A blank canvas. Yeah, but that's what I'm telling you. When you're born with a clean slate, it doesn't matter whether you're born again, sorry, uh, reincarnated or not. It doesn't matter because you you have to start from scratch. You see? Every time, every time. very, very far back. Yeah, but you don't know that. And you don't remember any of it. So it doesn't matter what is in your past life. remember that. 
but that is a fact. Yeah. Because life has been there ever since beginning of time. Yeah, there are many humans, I agree. But that, don't think that is... Human been around for, don't know, maybe six, during the time of the dinosaur, human was already... <laughs> I don't think there were any humans around the dinosaur yeah. time. But if anyway... Human, human, if human being is new, yeah. then human being is actually genetically modified by an external being. You believe in that? Really? Yeah. It's called the Emerald Tablet. Called the? Emerald Tablet. Okay. Uh, the you know that or you believe that? Well, there's somebody, <laughs> there's somebody who talk about it all the time. No, but you said you believe in it. That means you're not certain. Well, just that the Google, the <laughs> Google. Computer, Google, okay, allow you to open up yeah. all kind of uh, knowledge. Anyway, have you looked at, uh, have you researched or looked into the Quran or Islam? My son became a Muslim. Yeah? How old is it? Four foot four. How old is it? Four. He's a dwarf, 24 or 25 years old. Yeah, okay, my yeah. So what convinced him to become a Muslim? His friends, his study, his research, I don't know. His contact are many what you call Muslim. Good. Yeah, his business friend. Okay. Has he, has he tried to... I just let him have his own choice. Yeah. You know, because to me, um, well, the Chinese do not impose on other people as much as, you know, even like you have a family, I have my family. Mm. I don't tell you how to run your family. I yeah. don't even tell you when you beat your children. You want to beat your children, you beat your children. Yeah, we don't impose either. Huh? We don't impose either. Yeah. Okay. Do you think I'm impo Do you think I'm imposing my religion on you? Uh, <laughs> you see, you guys got very intellectual, intellectual thing. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, we are communicating. We are we are having a dialogue. But, but I'm not imposing. In fact, in Islam, it it specifically says la ikraha fit din. There's no compulsion in religion. So we cannot impose on you because what will happen when I impose on you or force you to become a Muslim, then you are fearing me rather than the Almighty. You see what I mean? So you're not converting out of your own conviction. Yeah. No, that's not true. Do you know where is the largest population of Muslims today? It's, it's, it's neighboring country to you. Exactly. Which army went to Indonesia? was colonized by the Dutch. No, no. I'm talking about because they became Muslim. Which Muslim army went to Indonesia to convert them? Because you, you made an allegation that it was under the sword. So I'm asking you, if you know history, tell me which okay. Muslim well, army... Muhammad himself has fought 65 battles. Uh, that wasn't my question. My question was, which so army... So this battle, the people have got converted. No, that's not true. In fact, no. the very first battle that Muhammad Wasallam fought is because the pagans came to fight them. So the Battle of Badr, there were 313 Muslims up, uh, who are ill-equipped, okay, not, not even uh, horses and uh, uh, their armor and swords and so on. And they were facing the, uh, the, the pagan army of more than a thousand. I remember you. I remember you. Yeah. How are you doing? You all right? Fine, thank you. Good. So what I'm saying is that it wasn't under the sword as you because I think you really have to go and find out from the history books rather than listening to people who make these allegations that the Muslims converted. In fact, if anybody converted by force, by force of the sword, then those people are sin sinning actually. Because we are not, we are told not to force people. Say again. People, people, they be join religion. Also, oh, economy, No. Oh, oh. Sit of a family. That's not true. When I when I was young and attend the church, yeah. it's just an to go to church. I was too old to learn English. Practice my English. <laughs> it's worked, I guess. <laughs> it's I worked. Also to build contact. Yeah. So that I can get a job. You know. So different people make choices in their own life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not saying everyone has the same journey. You might have your own journey, I might have my own journey, somebody else has their own journey. But if you're talking about religions or because of X, Y, and Z, I think you're stereotyping here the different religions because first and foremost, there is no point in forcing someone to convert to a religion because then that person is not convert, converting out of conviction 
or be because they're convinced of the religion, but out of fear, basically. And that is wrong. That is not the Islamic way. So how do you think people became Muslim? Uh, many, mo most of the people... There's a, my Muslim friend, my yeah. friend, he went to Colombia to be a, mission, a Muslim missionary. Okay. Teaching English at the same time. Yeah. So most, I think most people would convert to the religion of their parents. That's quite common, isn't it? Of the parents. So what the parents believe, they would believe. But when they grow older, then they might stay in that religion or that faith, or they might move into another which they find more convincing, or they might become atheists, yes, or agnostic, or whatever they are, whatever. Uh, so basically. What is the penalty for being a, being a Muslim? What is the penalty? I mean, we believe in hell and, and heaven. If a person who is a Muslim and then decided not to be a Muslim, well, that's up to him, isn't it? Up to him. Yeah. Well, what have you got in mind? Well, from what I read, from what I hear in YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. Apostasy. Apostasy, yes. So any, so any, any corporate punishment in Islam, where there is death penalty, which involves death penalty. It's not like, oh, you become a, uh, a non-Muslim from a Muslim and immediately you get the death penalty. It doesn't work like that. Every hard punishment, corporal punishment, it has to go through a due process. Yes. So there were many people. There are many people impacted by someone who just leaves the religion, especially those who um, want to spread uh, fitna or they want to spread mischief, for example, to uh, or they want to sabotage the government, for example. What do you think is a punishment for someone who is uh, uh, who is basically a traitor to their country? What's the punishment in, in Singapore, for example? Singapore, if you take drugs, if you try to smuggle drugs, only for 20 pen or 50 p coins, the weight. Is that penalty? Hanging. Exactly, yes. Hanging. So you see every country... You go to the court process. Exactly, yeah. So every country has their own, um, what do you say, their own process of how they should handle a particular crime or a particular um, action that they commit which is considered a crime yes and in Islam we have the and this is mainly in a in a place where there is Sharia so it's not like any vigilante any Muslim can come and say oh you have converted so we have to now hang you or kill you or something okay so it's, it's first and foremost it is in a Muslim country okay where there is the Sharia and this Sharia is following this particular um, uh, um, what do you say? Set of rules that if you if you break these rules, then this is the punishment. So the people who are living there, they already know these rules. Do you understand? Like in Singapore, they know the rules that if you involve in drug trafficking, yes, or or basically uh, exactly. So the people over there already know what the consequences of that action will be, and it's the same in the Sharia uh, compliant countries. So they already know the people who are living there. If they break the law, then that is the punishment. Same goes with stealing, same goes with murder or rape or, or, or any, any major crimes like that. There is the capital punishment. Okay, so it's the same in Islam. It's not something new. There is the apostasy laws in, the, in Deuteronomy, in, in, in the Bible as well. Yeah. And this is, if you look mostly, I mean, for example, over here, there are many, what do you say, rapists who go free after a couple of years. Yes? Rapists. So they have raped, they have been convicted. They have been charged, they have done their time for maybe two years, sometimes even less. Yes? They come out and sometimes they re-offend. Yes? So, in Islam, there is the punishment for rapists is, I mean, if they are convicted with uh, evidence and with uh, witnesses and so on, they, they, they get the life, uh, basically they get death penalty. So they do not have the opportunity to re-offend. And anybody who watches that particular uh, life sentence, that particular punishment, they will be thinking twice before they rape somebody else. And that is the reason these punishments are very stringent. So it's not just one person's life that is taken into account, but, but the victims as well. Because what happens to the victim of rape? I mean, basically her, her life is destroyed, yes? She's like a living corpse sometimes, not worth living. And she might even commit suicide herself. And she might get pregnant and then there might be more complex complexities so the consequences of this person's one action maybe his his urge or his lust yes has destroyed this other person's life
So it's not something taken lightly that, oh, just two years in prison and that's it. That's, that's the way Islam interprets it. So everything that has got capital punishment, it is considered to be... So rape is capital punishment? Is yes, it? yes. So any, anything that has capital punishment or death penalty, these sins or these crimes are considered to be significant and impact the life of the victims majorly. So take the, take the example of, uh, uh, of murder, for example. It's not life for uh, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth all the time. So in Islam, there are three options given. So the options that were given, so it's, it's for example, the family can, the, the victim's family, that means the person who got murdered, has the option to ask for blood money from the, fr uh, from, yeah, from the criminal, who, who, who's from the murderer. Or they're given the option to take life for life. That means uh, either uh, death penalty or, yes. So, so, uh, and the third option is also forgiveness. Do you know that? So one of the options given to the victim's family is they can forgive that. So no blood money, no death penalty, but straight forgiveness. And this, again, is based on... Is, is, yeah, this is on the victim's family because they understand the suffering the most. Not the jury, not the judge, not the lawyer, okay? Not the defense lawyer. The victim's family is the one who understands the pain the most. So it could be the victim's mother or father or brother or sister. You see what I mean? And that is, do you, what do you think? Do you think that's a just system? Well, I mean, different countries, different religions or different practices. I mean, here they will just go by the law. And what yeah, like I said, here they can leave you after two years. A rapist can go. Yes. yes. So every country has their own laws. And I think when, when you live in a particular country, then you, you have to obey the law. You have to understand the law. Yes. So someone living in Singapore most definitely will know that if it's hanging until death for drug trafficking, then they'll think twice before committing that particular crime. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, I think you should speak to your son or speak to Muslims and look into it. Don't just say, oh, I've had enough of it. <laughs> because, you know, the more you learn, the better for you, isn't it? Uh, Learning is from cradle to grave, like they say. The more you learn, the more you forget. The more you forget, the less you learn. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in, a, in a stage of going to learn more of this thing anymore. Keep an open mind, that's important, I guess. Well, you know, the brain is like a parachute. It opens. <laughs> parachute. It open, It works only when it's open. It works best when it's open. Okay. Otherwise, you'd be a dead cop in the middle of a field. Don't forget, the parachute was, was made by the brain. Parachute was made by the brain. By the brain. So they use the brains to make the parachute. That, that says something, isn't it? I mean, your brain is, is what, how you, how you, your intellect, and my intellect is how we utilize it. So use it rather than misuse it. Well, we, we, we utilize very little of our brain. We utilize very little. Yeah, that's, that's right. So we have got a lot of potential. That's what it means. So make the, make the most of it. But anyway, it was nice talking to you. I think we have... Uh, a big machinery going around. We just keep trying to bombard the information until the brain is not being straight. Yeah. Because for me, I believe that the statement, I am, therefore I think. It should be, I think. I think, therefore I am, rather. It should be, I am, therefore I think. Not the other way around. Why? Because we are not capable of clear thinking. Our thinking is just that because due to indoctrination, due to media, due to upbringing, due to the education, due to doctors, due to so many, so many things, that our thinking is uh, not from the right source. I think you have, everyone's given an intellect, it's how you use it. So just because somebody has been telling you something, you, you don't have to believe everything, you have to use your own mind and your own heart to come to a conclusion and and if you have done your best then that's two years back yeah you say to me that i make the most correct statement what do you mean a few years back in the conversation yeah you say uh, well i make the statement you said every book is written by men well books are written by men that is, a, that is the best answer or something okay books are written by men you know, <laughs> so, books don't fall from the sky, do they? So, you don't go by the books that are written. You go by the books or put it in another way. 
The one who speaks does not know. The one who knows does not speak. The one who speaks does not know. Why would he not know? Why would he speak something he doesn't know? He shouldn't speak that. The one who knows does not speak. Why not? Well, to me, my thinking is that the author who wrote this, this statement is referred to all the other species that do not speak, do not communicate in verbal. Well, they no. do communicate, but we don't understand, maybe? Yeah, they know what they are doing. Yeah. But we think that we know, and then we speak about it. Actually, people don't know what they are speaking. Yeah. By the way, the books are written by men, but there are scriptures, which are holy scriptures, which are, which are actually no revelation every from book, God. Every book is no, no, there's a difference between writing something. For example, if, 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 uh, if the director of a, co a company dictates to the uh, personal assistant, yes, and he or she takes down the note, who has written the note? Well, the thing is that there are different the assistant, the assistant wrote it down, but it's still the words of the one who dictated it. The same, the same way works, yeah, the same way it works with the scriptures. So what we believe is that God has created us. He didn't leave us in this world unguided. So he gave us the guidance through the, through the scriptures, through prophets and messengers and through the scriptures. And that is the reason I think you should look into it rather than uh, discounting it. And inshallah, Allah give you hidayah, give you guidance. Like I said, we don't need to impose on you or anybody else. That's not our purpose here. Our purpose here is to convey the message. You should open it sometimes and read it. It's pretty good as well. Oh, is it? It's very good. But unfortunately, it hasn't got a search function. Oh, it should uh, change the app. Yeah. I'll give you an app that has a search function. <laughs> I'm trying to download one with the search function. Yeah, inshallah. Because I search a lot of uh, what you call Bible with the search function. Mm. Let me give you one right now. You want to send it by email to me or? or no, no, it's, a, to, it's a very small, uh, what do you say? I know it's the app store, but you know. Because look, look at this one. All right, so it's it's um. So if you just go to G T A F, Golf second, Tango. Go and search it. Yeah. Oh come on. Just type that. I'll highlight it for you. So it's Golf Tango Alpha Foxtrot. Golf G Tango. Yeah, Golf Tango Alpha. Alpha. Fo Foxtrot. Foxtrot. Dot. Dot. O R G. O R G. Yeah. Okay. G T A F. Yeah. So G T A F dot org. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. It's it's by Green Tech Apps. It's a, it's a very good app for the Quran. No, no, no. Which which one is that? Uh, the first one. First one. Yeah. So it's got a. F it's got uh, tafsir, it's got uh, search feature, it's got uh, translations, exegesis. Mm -hmm. um, I think that should be sufficient for most people. Yeah. Because I got a uh, Bible app and then... Yeah. So if you download that Quran app, you, you're covered for most of the stuff uh, related to the Quran, inshallah. God willing. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you very really much. enjoyed the discussion, at least the last part of it. <laughs> yes. So, Jazakallah khair everyone for watching and for your time. Um, My goodness, everything is online here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to say Eid Mubarak. So, Eid Mubarak to the viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam. Um, keep us in your prayers, inshallah. Hope you guys had a, a lovely Eid with your families. And uh, thank you for your lovely comments, which I do read when I get the time on the channels. And yeah, do keep us, all the Dawah brothers, uh, in your prayers. And also keep in your prayers the Ummah around the world. And may Allah give Hidayah to our brother. Sorry, I forgot your name. <laughs> Not an easy one. <laughs> That's fine, yeah. The brother here from Singapore, inshallah. And to also make dua for all the people who are oppressed around the world in the Ummah, inshallah. May Allah make it easy for them. Or, uh, Take them out of their oppression. And uh, yeah, Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.